way it lined up and even you know three years ago the styles changed on racing a little mm -hmm. bit even now it's so much more front and oriented um and it's, you don't see horses trip out as much as you used to in general you know but all the breeders crumbs in there was only i think two that one on the front that were wire to wire scores yeah you know and, and like the track played a little funny that day because you had to be close because the wind was so aggressive mm -hmm. getting out but it would force you out of there and force you home so you didn't want to be making a big move up the backside mm -hmm. into the headwind you know so it, you know the wind here plays a big disadvantage to people a lot of times if they don't know it right because it, it gets its long stretches and the wind it, it can really torture you uh what are your breeders crown like do we have the final proofs yet how many drives you got in the breeders crown um i think i got four or five okay i think i haven't seen the final proof um i know that that's we we're recording this monday that'll be out tonight yeah. and the drivers yeah. changes and all yeah. that that stuff i know like i got that. uh i i had two for brian brown that made the final um i have two for irv miller both made the final they didn't draw as well um well we got the nine and the ten and eight and nine, eight, eight and nine. Yeah. um and uh, fifty dollar bill, he's back in it this year. Uh, don't know where they'll draw that today, I think. Uh, so we got a few shots, you know. Like the nine hole. What is what would you say is the most easiest, not easiest way? How do you win from the nine hole here? You gotta have some luck. You gotta have a really good horse and have some luck in, involved. Because it's such a tough spot to get early position because you have two options to get position leave hard or flow hard right you know so either one you have to go forward otherwise you're if you straight duck you're off by 10 automatically right i was gonna say what's been your most successful just kind of leave yeah, and yeah. and just hope something happens and you can you know because it's a long stretch that yeah. you save some yeah you know you hope to you know take a look at it see if maybe somebody's just not pressing as hard where you can maybe land six mm -hmm. you know or something like that or you know probably what will happen you know in the finals is It'll just be like races in the Meadowlands. Everybody's going to half push, you know, and sit parked and whatnot for position. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of got to make that call five, six steps out of there, you know. How much different is this than Woodbine, a seven eighths track, yeah. you know, Woodbine Mohawk? Like, is the gate different? Is the stretch a little bit different? Is it the wind? Is it the track? Banks, curve? What you know, would you say is... There's a lot of variance here. The material's a little bit different than everywhere else. Um, but I think you'll see horses get over it better this week um, just because they've already had to start over it. Um, and I think it's part of because of the long stretch and, and everything. Maybe a little tighter turns at times. But I think Hoosiers like racing on a, a big half mile track. Okay. You know, because you got to have early speed. They got to be able to take some air. And they still have to get home some. Um, so your style is like a big half, you know. I've noticed um, just between last year and this year from Woodbine, yeah. the gate is so much different. Like this gate, the, rock the gate and roll. And, and, and it, it almost like not too many horses right. like are on it right where they're they're you know they're i mean i put the cameras all on it yep. and i didn't know i felt like i could have put you know a foot out yeah into the horse's face and yep. nobody was going to touch it so is that does that set up just like what you're talking about a half mile track where they're getting out of there so fast that you really have to be motoring well uh, I, I think the faster car allows legit speed levers horse that can really leave the gate the more opportunity to leave fast mm -hmm. like when you have a slower car you allow a lot of horses that can leave hard for five or six steps they turn into small levers now mm -hmm. you know when the gate here it's a true lever that can leave here and go fast because you're already tops that top speed but close to it behind the car so that's why you see so many fast quarters here and such a long stretch before you get to the quarter so it allows for positioning and horses to make up ground early and it, I, I almost feel like because of that it allows whatever horses need to get into position to get into An position opportunity, yeah. yeah so I, I mean i know you're saying a lot of luck out of the nine but right. it also kind of sets up to where if you're a good horse you probably will still be in the mix oh you're you know? yeah yeah because you have enough time to get up into gear behind the gate and maintain your speed out of there you know where you have that opportunity to find a spot and the the, the tight you know Woodbine actually has one turn smaller than the other yeah. so and and the the going into that first turn that's a smaller turn yeah. and hoosier is kind of similar i like, think so like you can tell the bottom turn maybe it's uh you know angle just a little bit different uh but cooper our trackman's done a great job here um a couple years ago he kind of pushed out the tur uh stretches a little bit and tucked the turns in a touch okay so now it allows horses to get through the turn so much easier in my opinion because used to back in the day the way it was set up 
horse would kind of bump their knees more than they would okay. at other venues, you know. But since he redid that, it changed the material up a little bit. Like, horses get over it really easy. Um, like, last Thursday, uh, when Fortify went in 47 in a piece, yes. track was phenomenal. Yes. Yeah, and track's been good here all the time. And it, it kind of seems like it's set up for all types of horses, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't really see one type of horse no. that can't get around it or whatever. Like you're saying, horses that hit their Because there's horses on a mile track that still hit their yeah, knees. Yeah, exactly. You know? But in the past, you take some horses that raced at the fairs, wouldn't hit their knees maybe, and they'd bump their knees here. Just for the style. And I think because you're carrying so much speed, like into the bottom turn, you're carrying so much speed in that straight line then you're hooking around it. Yeah. You know, so you're making that not 90 degree turn, but a 45, you go through there. So I think horses did it that way because you're carrying so much speed at that angle. It's almost like, you know, sometimes you just need a, a, a push. Right. And I think having the 2017 Breeders' Crown here was a, for everybody to step up and see what we needed to change, what we needed to do, adjust, what's good here, what's not. And you've seen it in 2018, 2019, and now back in 2020 to where like every, any minor little adjustments that need to be made have been made exactly. and, and more horses are going faster and more top horses are here and, and you're not seeing only, you know, horses from the East Coast. Right. So like those horse, the, the track is better, everything, the drivers are better, trainers are better. It seems like everybody's adjusting to that style of, no, we're now at the next level. Yeah, and I think, you know, for a lot of the local guys, and local, I mean Ohio, and guys in the surrounding states, if the British Crown was back in Jersey or Canada, they might not have taken their shot to go. Mm -hmm. They might have a horse they thought was good enough, or he might have been at where he thought was top five, but he wouldn't go for the experience because going across the border, getting to Canada, or just driving all the way to Jersey, a 10, 12 hour ship. But for the guys locally, they'll take that opportunity to now and that chance to put in, and sometimes it works out great, you know, but it's, for a lot of guys, you don't have very many, you know, bullets in your gun where you always have a chance to be in the breeder's crowd mm -hmm. or take that opportunity. But I think being closer, it gives those guys a chance to maybe be in the big dance. I think too, okay, they may not be in the breeder's crowd, right. but, You've had a busy month. Right. Just with super finals, with series, with stakes races, all this stuff. It's like, and even into next week, I think, too, there's yep. more stakes yep. races. So you guys have built up an entire like program. Almost a month program, yeah. Like around it. I think it's awesome that you've got an entire month mm -hmm. of stakes and things like that. And it, that really brings, again, I think of a stable maybe only has one horse to bring out to the breeders crown maybe now they're bringing a Three whole four, fleet yeah, and exactly. it's good for you guys because everybody can be at the track and see how good the track is and see how good everything the racing is and it, it betters are there so i know it's a slow build to to build everything up but you're building a product out here that's that's pretty good yeah i agree it's like any franchise in a sense you're trying to build up it just takes time and people got to see it and get involved in it then they'll always come back and support it like, like any football team or anything, you know, it just takes a following to get it to the next level. You have to build a fan base, yeah. whether it's, you know, whether, again, wagers, owners, trainers, drivers, you had the, the sale this week. Uh, uh, did you buy any? Uh, I know you don't train anymore, right. but uh, do you do you own any? Do you do you just want to deal with riding horses? No, or like we had some this year, got rid of them, but uh, we'll just wait till next year and kind of start watching them qualify, the babies qualify. and. You know, maybe try to get in on one then. Do you like, uh, last question, do you like driving some of the younger ones or some of the older ones? You know, it doesn't matter to me. I just like driving horses that have a good attitude and they, they show a, an effort that they want to compete. Mm -hmm. You know, whether they're a non the one to be claimed, but he tries hard every week, or is an invite pacer, but he just tries hard every time. You know, and that's what you look for as a driver. You, you want some that, one, they're competitive, but you try to find those things that in between that are just they're enjoyable drive because they try hard every time. It seems like a, a $50 bill is like, again, the exactly what you want, where maybe you got to guide him a little bit, right. you got to work him through, and you just see his ascension. Yeah, because, you know, he always had ability, you know, a ton of ability. And it was just getting him to where he felt like he could do it himself because he wanted to, but he just wasn't sure that he could do it. And then you you and the trainer just yeah. have helped him along. Yeah. and pretty easy to drive and things yeah, like that yeah, so it, so that those are the type of horses that are kind of nice and that we wish were a little more i mean 
get a horse that's on a left line or right line that's fighting you it's even if they're competitive it's, right. it makes for a frustrating yeah it, it'd be like going through rush rush hour traffic with your car having shoddy brakes yeah where you're hitting a brake and there's not really none there or your power steering is going out Stop. and you're trying to do 65 yeah. 70 in and out it's the same with horses you know you're trying to make them start and stop left and right you know as easy as possible and the more you fight with them just like your car it stresses you out and it makes them tired as well so the easier everything works the better your outcome can be you know last thing i gotta do it to you right right now the the hoosier park breeders crown tally is uh trace two timmy zero big right. fat big fat zero yeah. Uh, Timmy had a pretty good um, a limb. He, he, he won did, a couple yeah. of a limbs. Yeah. Are we gonna say that the limbs don't matter? And and Timmy, you 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 still got three to catch you to, right. to, to pass you. So you got to extend that a little bit more uh, before, because that, that's really all we care about, right? Because I know he's got more breeders crowns, right, but yeah. at Hoosier, but not, not in Indiana, he not in Indiana. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he, I mean, this is your state. Right. Um, is there like? as you've ascended and he's already at the top like that's got to be kind of cool for you know the family the parents and things like that but every once in a while you got to be like timmy kiss the ring right <laughs> yeah you know they should give rings out that you mentioned they should I give think a ring so out. just at well just not yeah. for everyone just just for, for you right yeah yeah just the leading driver for the last seven years well, I mean, and the leading you, tea trick maybe if you win a breeder's crown they should give you a ring uh are, are you like if your brother wins one you're gonna have to remind him. I'm gonna he's, pat him on the back. Say, good job, man. You still got one more to right, get. You still got one more yeah, to, right. to pass you, and then yeah. you gotta win one right. and be like, "This is still how you do it." Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, he had to have been a little bit like. I know it's a brother thing. Right. How, how many years are you guys apart? Uh, five. Five. Yep. So he's older, right? Yep. You, you had to have just. I would just send him a text every once. Uh, no. Just, uh, no. No. He, he, no. It just just wasn't a good day, you know, for him that way. You know, just horses. But good fire. day for you. Yeah, and you take it when you can get it. You them, just you remind know? them that. Be like, right. I got two, bro. You're right. You know, in the game, you want everybody to succeed, you know, and so you don't want to, you know, wish any harm or ill fate for anybody. You know, you want everybody to have their chance to do well. And, you know, that those two days there, I had two really good days, you know. Which one of his is going to win? They all have good shots. You know, a couple of trotters he's got really good. You know, Sharton, I thought, you know, she raced respect of the other day, and hopefully she'll get a little bit better. And, you know, it's... It, it, it's say. like you know, it's his best horse may be lion sentinel right yeah and she's got to go up against party you know, girl hill yeah. you know he, he could win four you know maybe you know and he might have four seconds you know they all could race really good you know if they all have a great day you know maybe like blazer britches have a great day that day and you know they can come up on top is there a race you're not in that you're looking forward to uh like we have tall dark stranger yeah. we have the open trot with chimpanzee in atlanta you know, we, we have the three or cold trot. Amigo Volo is coming back trying to defend his crown. So is there, I, and I don't know which races you're in or you're not, but. I think the three or cold trot, I think that would be a great race because there's a few in there that might be a little bit sleepers, you know, and can maybe uh, step up and make it really interesting. Okay. So Trace Tietrick, the leading driver at here. This is your house, yeah. your turf. You got to go through him if you want to win one of these things, right? I, I guess. Your words, not mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks, Trace. All right. Thanks, man.